I grew up in, in beauty parlors and barbershops. And so I had a special affection for ceremonies in Dark Old Men because it takes place in a, in a barbershop setting. And I, and I said to myself when I saw it, here are some, this is like what my life was about. And it was the first, one of the first opportunities where I, I really saw a part of my life reflected on screen. And I felt as if I belonged. Would you call Raisin and the Sun a naturalistic play? I would not. And what would you call it? If you had to put it I away? hope that it is genuine realism. What's the difference? It's enormously different. Well, naturalism tends to take the world as it is and say, this is what it is, this is how it happens. It is true because uh, we see it every day in life that way. You know, you simply photograph the garbage can. Mm -hmm. And, and realism, mm -hmm. I think uh, <clears throat> the artist who is creating the realistic work imposes on it not only what is, but what is possible, because this is part of reality, too. Lorraine arrived in New York in 1948, like I did, uh, same year. I came uh, after dropping out of the University of Michigan, 18, 19 years old when we got here. And then the third wing <laughs> of, 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 of our trio uh, came across the river from Jersey City, and I was around the Elder. Because I'd always been a writer, you know. Uh, I started acting, and I started studying acting, uh, because I'd always been fascinated with it. And plus the fact, I thought it was, I figured that I would always be able to get a job quicker as an actor than I ever would be able to be accepted as a writer. And Lorraine and Lonnie were essentially poets. And after I, uh, by around the age of 21, managed to come up with a, a, an epic play four acts that would run about 10 hours, I think. Lorraine, Lonnie, and I had read this play to a small audience up at the Teresa Hotel. In fact, Lonnie had acted it and Lorraine had acted it. And after this, uh, this play of mine, uh, Lorraine and Lonnie decided, well, maybe they should, <laughs> maybe they should try that and a little playwriting too. You know what happened with history, with Lorraine with her masterpiece. You know, Raising in the Sun, and Lionel, of course, ultimately with, with his uh, masterpiece, uh, Ceremony in Dark Old Men. In my mind at the time, and I said to myself, I said, well, possibly if the rain uh, can do it, maybe there is some hope, you know, because there was a lot of years uh, in where Blacks were concerned who were involved in theater that were really blank, dry, humid, you know, arid years when the you could see nothing in the future. You could never see any of the walls tumbling. Thanks, fellas. <laughs> but, but, but what am I going to do with a typewriter? I, I don't know nothing about no typing. I would like to know where they got the money to buy one. But you know what you told me about writing down your stories now. You can write them down three times as fast. But I don't know how to type. Man, with the money we gonna be having, I can hire somebody to teach you. What money are you gonna have? We're going into business, baby, right here in this barber shop. Theo. We're gonna be selling bootleg whiskey, numbers, and little toilets you with the What? Yeah, Theo. you heard me. And if you don't like it, you can pack your bags and leave. Leave? I'll pay the rent here. Mm -mm, no more. I pay it now. Hey, shut you up, know, Theo. We're gonna show you something, girl. I, I, you, you, I, I said, shut up. Is, is he telling the truth? Yes, he's telling the truth. You mean to tell me that you're going to turn this shop into a bootleg joint? I can turn it into anything that I want to. Not while I'm still here. The lease on this house has my signature, not yours. I am not going to let you do this. You got no choice, Adele. You don't have a damn thing to say. Every off-Broadway, white off-Broadway producer and Broadway producer at, at one time or other read ceremonies of dark old men, but none of them were ever interested in it. And if there hadn't been no Negro Ensemble Company, I doubt if ceremonies in dark old men would have ever been produced. Everybody dies, Adele. This whole place was built for us to die in. But you, you bite, you scratch, you kick, you do anything to stay alive. Yes, you bite, you scratch, you kick, you steal, but still nothing changes. Just as I was doing, coming back here thinking that I could help Mama overcome the troubles in her life. Adele, I'm sick and tired of hearing about your sacrifices. You came back here because you had no place else to go either. 
You got scared too young, too soon. Mama was going to die anyway, and you knew it. Yes, I knew it. The very first day I came home from school, I took one look into her eyes. I knew it. And so I waited, thinking maybe I could get back to school. Maybe find someone to love. Or maybe just float out into the world and let whatever was going to happen, happen. Oh, but God, she took so long to die. And when she finally did, I knew what it was that made her so inexhaustible. I got so close into what she was as a woman, I wanted to be like her. And so I found myself doing as she'd done, taking care of three grown men, trying to shield them from the danger that waited for them beyond that door. But who the hell ever said every black woman had to be a damn savior? For the best screenplay based on material from another medium, the nominees are Mario Puzzo and Francis Ford Coppola for The Godfather, Julius J. Epstein for Pete and Tilly, Lonnie Elder III for Sounder, For most actors, appearing in a play is for a mere artistic pleasure. For the cast of Ceremonies in Dark Old Men, it is that and more. Sherry, is this your first production, and what do you feel about the play? It's the first large part I've had, and I feel that the play makes a definitive statement about the black experience, and especially in the urban slums of America. This play right here really gives the opportunity uh, to express uh, more about how a family it really is in New York. At one time or another, in every black woman's life, she's had uh, several passes, you know, made toward her. And if she's any kind of woman at all, she can ward them off. Overall, it adequately uh, expresses exactly what happens not only to this family in Harlem, but to black people everywhere. And you might even be able to take it on a universal basis and say that, yeah, it happens to black people, but also it, it could in fact happen to anyone.